it's more fun to serve from 12 to 4 in the morning than it is from 12 to 4 in the afternoon. You got paella coming, Jason? It's hard for a chef to leave work and go straight home. I'm not sure it happens very often. I have been throwing after hours party for a long time. I gather a group of friends, mostly chefs. They know it's gonna be great food, great ambiance, and of course, a lot of wine. People come, people talk. Of course, everyone has a cool story to tell. When you invite somebody at a party, you don't give him a script. After Hours is a real show without a script. After midnight, food tastes better than before midnight. <laughs> Hey, I just want to thank everybody for making it all the way out to Brooklyn <laughs> and coming uh, out with me and my brother and having dinner Cheers. with us. So, come pie. Thanks to Danielle Cheers. for bringing us all together tonight. Cheers. A Brumbach brother really made their mark and their fame on the original Blue Ribbon. Got lobster fired? Everybody had to go there late night, but not only chefs, but cooks and people within the uh, restaurant industry. Nice and sunny, yeah. Blue Ribbon sushi came a little bit later. We've always had this crazy notion that every time we go somewhere or see something that we like, that we could do that. Hello. Hello chef. It's good to be here. How are you? Made Hi. it to Brooklyn. Beautiful and sunny. Welcome. How are you today? Great to see it's you. Good to see How you. Are you. How are you, buddy? They're a wonderful story of two brothers who have a passion and know exactly where they belong in the market. They know what they can provide to their guests. Of course, they always had great food and very uh, rustic and no pretension. I mean, the, the kind of food a chef like to eat after work. We're gonna have a little Japanese feast. We're gonna do some sushi tonight. Yeah, I look forward to that. We're gonna learn. That's gonna Us be too. fun. People have always said to us, are you worried about this competition? Or, oh, somebody else opened an oyster bar or somebody else is doing late night. We've never felt like we have any competition. And not to sound cocky or anything like that, but it's just the way we've gone about our business is we've tried to create Blue Ribbon as what Blue Ribbon it is. And I guess that's why each restaurant is called Blue Ribbon. Okay, that's good. Excellent, let's go. Hey, how are you, chef? Ça va? How are you, sir? How are you, chef? It's gonna, gonna be, be, it's gonna be my first sushi class. <laughs> So we started getting this concept of maybe we should make a sushi restaurant. While we were in that process, Bruce and I spent time going out to lunch and dinner, and we started picking sushi every time we went somewhere to eat. So we're going to uh, just really have fun with uh, the sushi today. Tachikawa is going to teach us uh, different preparations, how he does it, Japanese style. You want to mm. show us the abalone, maybe a presentation for okay. abalone? Um, abalone. So you give him a little salt here. Yes. So what the abalone kind of uh, wake up. Uh-huh. And then we'll come up the texture. Every day I watch this stuff. Both my brother and myself were always marveling at that, you know, this is in our backyard, basically. Growing up, we both cooked a lot at home. On my 12th birthday or something, I got a wok as a birthday present. We were very influenced by Benihana. Right. Benihana was our number one. <laughs> influence. We trained in France and you know I think we're pretty good with a knife over the years. 20 so years later he's an expert. It's a whole to me it's a whole nether level. And I think it's the art of tradition also where uh, everything has to be so respectfully prepared. Mm. Delicious. Very sweet. Beautiful. And this is horse mackerel, correct? Tachikawa? Yes, sir. Yeah. What do you do with the bones? Uh, Nothing? For the decorate. Oh, yeah. For the, with the bone. Yes, sir, So this is a very traditional dish in this restaurant. I love it. And we sell a lot, a lot of fish like this. This is artwork. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Should we make a little bit of sushi? Yeah? Very yeah. so good. I would love to, yeah. OK. okay. 
tuna, sir? Is there a side to the door? Because yes. I noticed one side is shiny. Yes. And one side is It must rough. be the shining for the outside. Shining for the outside. OK. Not sure what's happening. I think you're going to convince me to open a sushi bar after that. That's clear. That would be fun, right? Yeah. Nice. Voila. Bravo. Very nice. Yeah, we definitely need uh, <laughs> to practice. When I go to Japan, I'm going to get a crash course. <laughs> Not bad for beginners. That's a nice tuna. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Tuna's good. Good idea. Our work not so good. Tuna was very good. There have been some many, many unbelievable, incredible memories with Danielle. There's a better average on how much tuna is in the center of it than yours. You know? Yeah, what happened to my tuna? Uh, it's good. <laughs> We've spent many a nights up by the bar at the end of the night, and uh, we welcome the chefs coming down. Tachikawa, thank you so much. Anytime. Danielle, thank you. I'm really amazed by the soya sauce. Very different. Thank you very much. This is Daniel. Maestro, I come back and have the full course. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs>
Oh, wow. That's good. I saw them almost jumping up the morning, box today. Yeah. This was what I first thing I ate when I walked in today. That's a good breakfast item. Fresh yeah. firefly squid. And after I ate it, Toshi told me, oh, yeah, you're supposed to take the eyes out. So we've, we've done that for this Thank now. You. That is so much. Criteria. So, really <laughs> so we can we squeeze the it. lemon right over. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. And then in the glass, we have uh, okra and abalone. And a very special seaweed. And a very special seaweed. Yes. <laughs> Generally in Asia, when, when they tell you something's very special, it implies that it will, cause, it will cause boners. <laughs> it will cause boners. <laughs> right. okay. And, and, and then it, it, it's a live one served. You know, I'm a little intimidated sitting at this table because, you know, we've got like six cooks. And cooks, the fishier, the better. The oilier, the better. The funkier, the better. So you better get ready, girl, because you are in for a long night. It's going to be a long, night. Be a long night. So what's happening hey, in I this squid? I can take it. I can do hey. it. No problem. He, he didn't even clean the squid. And they're soggy right whole, now. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> totally <laughs> whole, with the guts and everything in it. The eyes it's just so no sweet eyes. and fresh. And the eyes. I just, just want to make the sure eyes. there are no eyes. You know, when I, so but here sweet, you need yeah. a little bit of sake to finish the last one. Huh? Right. <laughs> <laughs> The reason why sake is so traditionally paired with sushi is because in Japan, they have rice, rice is indigenous and growing all over the country, like grapes are growing in Italy and France, I guess, so. And sake, just, they have, it has the same traditions as the wineries of Europe. You know, there's so many different sakes. Today we have a couple seasonal ones. Um, seasonal sakes are namasakes, which means that they're not pasteurized. Normally. Sakes like these two are pasteurized or pasteurized once after they're first brewed and then once they've matured before they're going to be sent out. So the ones that are not pasteurized, namasake, tend to have a different flavor altogether rather than the pasteurized sakes. Which should we taste first? Um, this one, gokyo. No cork in no sakes. No cork involved. Would you like to pour for me? Of course, because in uh, Japanese culture, you never pour your own drink. We also Whoa. over pour. Uh-huh. You relax there, boy. <laughs> you were spilling. No, we overpour as um, just a sign of manners, a sign of generosity. It's got a kind of a really lively... Zinginess. Zingy flavor. All right, should we try the Yawanotsuki? The kind of the dangerous thing about sake is it is so easy to drink, and, and I think we're not so the used to drinking it the same way. Right. Where you don't feel that kind of gradual intoxication like you feel with beer or wine. Or wine. And right. I find a lot of times people go from thinking they're really pretty clear to standing up after their meal, and you see people kind of wobbling, yeah. waving down yeah. the aisle, and sake can hit you pretty hard. So, how many boxes would you recommend? Uh, two. Two, two, and then the you're last. then you're playing with fire. Is this how you guys eat and talk when you get together? Does it always immediately go to sort of? We're behaving pretty well guts? so far. I was gonna say yeah. this is so yeah. refined. So I mean, they prepared me. Here, so. They prepared me. It only gets uglier. Okay, excellent, <laughs> excellent. Danielle and I, uh, we got a good sushi lesson today mm. from uh, oh, yeah. Tachikawa, our chef. Yeah, how do you really? do? I well, made a couple of sushi rolls today. I Beautiful rolls. Did you? I don't own the sushi bar or sushi restaurant, but I made a better roll than Bruce. Oh, <laughs> wow. But you know, actually, you, you raise go. a good point, Danielle, because every chef I know loves sushi. Mm. And everyone talks about opening a sushi bar. You guys all talk about opening a sushi bar. You really want to open a sushi bar. But Bruce and Eric, they you guys did. actually opened a sushi bar. They did it. The sushi bar. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, which is which is very ambitious nice. because you know everyone talks about it because this is what you know chefs do. You know, they eat sushi. They go Why? Because night. I think they can reach total perfection. It becomes such an artwork, I think, and uh, yes, and art it, form. I mean, and it's the ultimate. Less is more. It's ingredient driven. There's yeah. no right. about the ingredient. There, there's no uh, artifice. Right. It's, you there's either, nothing it's between either you good or and what you're right. what you're tasting. There's no manipulation. There's no extraction of flavor yeah. when you're cooking it. Yeah. Was it difficult at first when you when you set out to do this? I just remember telling our grandmother. <laughs> who was very confused as to what we were doing. <laughs> what is it and what are you making? And she, was, she kept saying, I think I'll eat it the original the way it. <laughs> but that looks very nice. Yeah, you know, it's amazing. Really when chefs and foodies sit around, it's like, we're, we're eating. We're eating great food now, and we're talking about other great food. <laughs>